once again, um, it's my privilege to introduce a gentleman that I've been uh, had the privilege of working for for 28 years. I think my earlier comments about the fact that this is someone who, as a physician, is very passionate and very committed about patient health care is something that he's demonstrated for all of you today. So without further ado, Dr. Namadian, uh, it's all yours. It's good conversations. Uh, I brought to your attention is that this dominant epidemic of whiplash injuries that are occurring, as I pointed out to you from the National Cancer, the National Institutes of Health report, occurring at the rate of 1.2 million a year. But there's another territory, and you heard a little bit about it today, and that's the contact sports activity. And from various athletes that I've spoken to, um, it's on the scale of 4,000 athletes, former and present athletes, who are suffering from this uh, disaster. And in general, it's not recognized that the neck is playing a major role in all this syndrome. Um, now, we're, 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 I'm, I'm grateful that we have with us a former two-time NFL Super Bowl champion, Garo Yapremian. <laughs> and after, after I get through my comments on uh, the, the athletes that we have scanned, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Garo to come up and tell us what his experience has been in NFL sports with respect to these types of injuries. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna be, uh, I'm very careful when I talk about uh, these athletes because some of them are really frontline headliners and they're very sensitive about having any of this directed at them, so I'm not using any names, all right? Um, but the, the slides that I have up here today, and uh, Jay, we can get the lights out, I think, if you want. Um, <clears throat> this is a well-known NFL athlete, and uh, this is someone who had been diagnosed as dementia, and um, it was brought to us, and we scanned him, and we, the, the, the first thing I want to know is, having been diagnosed as dementia, I asked, have you had any MRI scans, and the answer was yes. I said, where? And he said, oh, my brain. I said, anybody ever do an X scan? He said, no. And I want you to see what was not being seen uh, by the profession that was examining him in the sports industry and something I hope we're going to change. So now the first thing that we saw on this person uh, was a suggestion of cerebellar tonsillectopia and even the hint of uh, CSF cortical, what I've been calling cortical CSF pooling, which I take really largely as, as an indication that there is operative an increase in intracranial pressure that's causing uh, that uh, pooling of the CSF. And you'll see more as I go on with this athlete. Now, we, when he came to us, we went ahead and besides looking at his brain, we went and looked at his neck. And what, of course, you see is this profound pathology right here at C two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and you see some indication of stenosis, but you see these herniations depending on the cord. Uh, and you see the same trauma over here, none of which had been seen, had been diagnosed on somebody who had been looked at by uh, every physician you can possibly imagine. And look what it's doing in terms of tormenting that cord, in terms of distorting the placement of that cord. Now, when we went ahead and did the axials on him, you'll notice that we see a pronounced counterclockwise rotation of C2 uh, as it manifested also in the spinous process of this same person. <coughs> and this is the same athlete before treatment on these two and after treatment on these two. And what you see, of course, is this uh, cortical CSF pooling here 
before treatment and a significant relief of that after the patient was treated. Now, the patient was treated by Dr. Rosa, uh, who addressed that C2 ro uh, malrotation that I showed you. Now, I, I have to tell you that when the patient came to us, um, the lady he was with, when we were ready to scan him, came to us and said that, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do the scan. And I said, why not? She said, well, this morning when he awoke, he was grabbing his head with his hands right around. She had a picture of it. And he was having knife-stabbing pains, excruciating knife-stabbing pains at the base of the skull. And we didn't think we was even, even able to get here so we could do the scan. Well, we did get the scan, and we got the results that I just showed you. And we took him to Dr. Rosa, who restored that malrotation that I just showed you on C2. And the patient's response was, I can't believe it. I haven't felt like this in four years. And he was, com you know, he was just a, an astonishing relief of symptoms. And he couldn't imagine where it, uh, how he was fortunate enough to have that all happen to him.